I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors of Brevard, and on behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, Rick Broderick, our executive director, and Kim Bernard, our education specialist. Welcome to Helping Seniors Update. Today is Friday. Hey, Vicki Moore, how are you today? I'm doing great, Kerry. How about you? All is good, and we're so excited about all the good things that are going on with Helping Seniors. We're in the middle of the uh, getting things ramped up with the Helping Seniors car raffle. You know, we have a, a date selected uh, that we're going to meet out at the uh, American Muscle Car Museum uh, in October and do the grand drawing. So uh, we're all excited about everything coming up. HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com is a great place to get details. And as we mentioned before, <laughs> we keep working on our Helping Seniors uh, cruise. And uh, because the port is still not going to be open on May 30th, we did have to reschedule. So let me give you the new cruise date. The new cruise date is October 17th. And it's uh, we're sailing right from Port Canaveral on the beautiful MSC Divina. Lots of uh, information about that on the Helping Seniors Travel Club dot com helping seniors travel club dot com but what we're gathered here uh, today for and really excited about this this is our art of healthy living series that we've had the privilege of working together with vicky moore with care plus um vicky this has been a great series because we keep learning all these different things that help us lead a really good life i mean we've talked about health things where we uh have studied things like, you know, the best, how to understand organic food labeling. We've had uh, sessions where uh, you've walked us through uh, Medicare 101. So we kind of understand uh, things that are going on there. We've had uh, segments on uh, social security. I mean, you have just pulled out a wealth of information. It's just great stuff. Well, thank you, Carrie. I, I'm, I'm glad it's been helpful. Um, today's, today's topic, protecting yourself from scams, you know, is not directly related to your physical health, but definitely, you know, it's something that, you know, all of us, seniors included, need to be, you know, very mindful of, and it definitely affects our health. I mean, if we've been scammed or something bad happens to us, it's definitely going to affect, affect our, our lives and, you know, our mental and physical self. So I think it's a really um, very relevant topic. I, I think so. And, you know, as, as we're uh, working our way through <laughs> kind of what I call the COVID times, you know, uh, there has been a real uptick in the terms of scams and things because uh, when we've been doing the things that they've asked us to do, meaning social distancing, trying to be more careful about going out and things like that, um, there's been a real upsurge, as I've understood, you know, in some of the, the telephone scams and other things, and people even coming door to door. Uh, I've seen uh, notices about being careful with people who show up at your doorstep and talk about COVID vaccines and things like that. So I just know that we're going to get a lot out of um, today's presentation in particular. And so uh, kind of with that in mind, I want to remind you of a couple of things before we, before we jump in. Number one, uh, you can get all the Helping Seniors updates on our Helping Seniors website at any time. So you can go back and refresh, uh, refresh uh, your memory or maybe see it for the first time uh, at helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. That's our website, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Also, uh, if you like to uh, maybe uh, get YouTube and that way you can watch it on your smart uh, uh, TV at home, um, you can find us at Helping Seniors of Brevard on YouTube and ditto on Facebook. I know a lot of people these days watch uh, video on Facebook, but we also make sure that the entire Art of Healthy Living series is available on the Helping Seniors of Brevard Facebook page. And so, Vicki, um, I just want to remind people before we get started, because in case somebody may be tuning in for the first time, uh, Vicki, you really are an area expert when it comes to helping people sort out best options on uh, Medicare. And people go, well, Medicare open enrollment uh, is kind of done for the year. But because of the reputation that you guys have through Care Plus, I understand that people can talk to you anytime throughout the year even if they already came up or thought they came up with something in, um, in the late part of last year, but maybe it's not working the way that they had hoped. Um, you're exactly right, Carrie. So we are actually in the midst of what we call OEP, which means open mm -hmm. enrollment period. And that period runs from January 1st to March 31st. And actually anybody that had a Medicare Advantage plan 
whether they've had it for years or they made a change or, you know, just had turned 65 last year, this is that three month period when they can make changes. Basically, if you have buyer's remorse, you can change into another plan. And I would be definitely um, very, you know, I, I definitely would help um, anyone that has questions about that and, you know, wants plan information. But on top of that, Care Plus is very fortunate in that, um, gosh, the, this is the second year in a row. And I think that the fifth time that we are a five-star plan. So that gives us a special enrollment period um, or people a special enrollment period. If they aren't happy with their current plan, they can enroll into our plan any month of the year. So they don't have to do it during OEP. They don't have to do it during AEP or even their initial, you know, once they initially become eligible for Medicare. So that is something, you know, we're very proud of the fact that we are a five-star plan. And that's based on, um, you know, how our members rate us and, you know, and that's given to us by CMS. So it's, it's an honor that we are that plan and it just gives um, people out there the, the opportunity to join our plan any time of the year. So, yes. Yeah. And you know what I was going to remind folks too, because I have seen you go out of your way to work with people who have pretty complicated situations and help them get uh, into a situation that's actually going to make difference. A lot of times people maybe don't understand what the prescription plan is going to be, or there's a certain particular uh, need that they know they're going to be facing in the next year, and maybe their current plan doesn't help them with that. So I guess the, the, the place I want to begin with is to ask you to share your contact information in case somebody says, hey, listen, I'd like to to talk to Vicki and ask her about my situation and see if there's maybe something I need to, I could improve what, what I've got now. Okay, great. Yes. Um, so the best number to reach me at is, um, is my cell phone and that is 502-777-6277. And I'll say that again. It's 502-777-6277. And I actually have a, a new email address that I'd like to share. Yes. And that is, um, gosh, it's vmore5 at careplus-hp.com. So I'll say that one more time. vmore5 at careplus-hp.com. Great. So those are both two great ways to reach me and I would love to help in any way that I can. And speaking of, um, you know, helping out, you and I, I think, had a mutual friend that had a situation that I was able to help with. So I was very excited to be able to help him. And it, it was a little complicated. It was, you know, helping him get, obtain his Part B and, um, you know, dealing with um, the Social Security office and Medicaid. So those are the kinds of things that can get a little tricky and complicated. And I am happy to help, you know, in those situations in any way that I can. Yeah, it's always nice to not have to navigate those rapids on your own and, and take take good uh, take full advantage of, of what uh, Vicky's knowledge and expertise on this uh, can do because you know it's just really helpful when you know somebody who knows the right way to work through those things and that would be you, Vicky. <laughs> so well, so thank I, you. I try. I'll say that. <laughs> So thank you for what you do. But I'm excited to move on with uh, let's learn. Let's learn today. How, how do we keep ourselves and protect ourselves from scams? So let's just dive right in. Okay. Well, I want to say too, um, it's interesting. This is such a great topic because unfortunately, it's, it's such a prevalent thing that happens, especially to our seniors. But um, I actually, I had someone that called me recently and a situation had happened with their mom. And so she just shared that story. And, you know, that situation is, is, is you know, highlighted in this program. And it, so that was right here in Brevard County. So it's definitely out there happening. So, you know, we just want to make sure and educate as many people as possible on what to look out for. So, yeah, so here we go. Um, so we're talking about protecting yourself from scams. Um, today, we're going to talk about how many Americans fall victim to scams every year. The criminals who perpetrate these scams are often creative and conniving and making it difficult to avoid them. So we're gonna talk about six common scams to watch out for, and there'll be lots of tips for protecting yourself from these frauds and scams and you know what you can do if you become the victim of a scam. And um, as we already talked about, I am Vicki Moore. I am a sales agent with CarePlus. Um, here's the six common scams. Um, we're going to spend some time talking about each of these. 
Um, the first one, um, funeral and cemetery scams. There's, well, there's identity theft, there's fake charities, there's tech support, there's grandparent scams and sweepstakes and lottery scams. And we're going to discuss each one and how to recognize it and how to protect yourself. The first one um, that we're going to talk about is the funeral and cemetery scams. Scammers use different approaches to take advantage of someone who is grieving a loss. In one method, scammers read obituaries and they call or attend the funeral of someone they don't know at all. They will prey on a devastated widow or widower by claiming that the deceased has an outstanding debt with them and they're attempting to get the money to settle the debt, which is just, just disgraceful. Um, in another approach, dishonest funeral homes might try to cash in on a family's lack of knowledge of funeral service and add extra charges to the bill. A different but related scam shows up as an email informing you that a friend has passed away. And at first glance, it looks reputable because the email may be on the letterhead of a local funeral home. And this is called a phishing scam. The email will encourage you to click on a link to get more information about the upcoming funeral. But clicking the link will take you to a malicious website that will infect your computer with malware. Malware, which is short for malicious software, is used to prevent your computer from working or to get sensitive information you might be storing on it. And that's similar to what, you know, I mentioned the person that had called me recently that happened to her mom. It wasn't, it wasn't related to a funeral, but they were, they were doing the phishing so that they could take control of their computer, which, you know, once that happens, it's, it's very scary. Yes. Um, so how can you protect yourself against scams like this? First of all, don't give money to anyone unless they're able to prove that he or she is owed a debt. Next, when planning and paying for a funeral, understand that it's normal to have a hard time making decisions while grieving. Ask for help from a calm, level-headed family or friend um, with good business sense. And you can also avoid dodgy funeral homes by getting referrals from your families and friends. And I think a lot of us, I know in Brevard County, I mean, People, people do like to operate with, um, you know, who they know, who they're comfortable with, um, and getting referrals, because that, that definitely can make a big difference. So even if you're somebody out there that um, isn't, you know, maybe you don't have family close by, or maybe you don't have friends even in the area, you know, you can reach out to an organization like, this, like you know, like Helping Seniors of Brevard, and I'm sure you guys would definitely have great resources for people too. So even if you feel like you don't have anyone to turn to in times like this, there's definitely resources. Just you know, make sure you, you, you reach out to them. Um, don't allow anyone to pressure you into making a purchase or a commitment. This is your decision to make, not someone else's. So if you feel uncomfortable, you should leave. You know, whether it's in person or on the phone, you know, if you're uncomfortable, hang up the phone. Don't, don't deal with it. Um, and lastly, never click on a link or an email unless you are absolutely sure where it will take you. If you think someone you know has passed away, call the funeral home listed in the mail and ask. And this all this all this information comes from the National Council on Aging. All right. So our next scam is identity theft. This is scam number two. Um, and so. Identity theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in the U.S. and it has topped the list of consumer complaints to the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, for over five years. So according to the FTC, identity theft happens when someone steals your personal information and uses it without your permission. Identity theft can happen in a variety of ways, but one of the most common ways is getting a call or an email from someone stating that they need to verify your account number. The caller may ask for your social security number or your credit card information. When they have this information, they can match it with your phone number, last place of employment, and your home address. All of this information combined gives them an opportunity to take out loans and open new credit cards or accounts in your name, leaving you responsible for all of these charges. Identity thieves can be very resourceful when looking for what they want. They may rummage through garbage and trash to find personal information. So there are several things that you can do to protect yourself. First one is never give anyone access to your personal information. If someone calls you to verify your account, hang up and call the bank and or the company that holds the account, they can ensure if the request is valid or not. And then you should also check all three credit report companies, which that would include Equifax, 
Experian and TransUnion at least once per year. You can do this for free every once every 12 months. You can also place a freeze on your credit reports by contacting each of the three companies. And then you also um, want to shred all of your personal documents before throwing them away. This includes anything that lists your social security number, or your birth date, your bank account number, or your home address. And you know that's because there are people that that rummage through your trash. So you know that's a good way to prevent any of that information getting into the wrong hands. And there are many companies who offer credit monitoring services. These are fee-based services, so it's important to do your homework before signing up for one. Um, so yeah, so that information, I mean, for myself, I, you know, dealing with Medicare and, you know, I, I do have to deal with private information. And it's interesting to me, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people out there that are very cautious. And so there's times when I have to ask for a social security number. And, um, and a lot of times people just very freely give it to me and you know that that is what it is but there's a lot of times that people are more cautious so i say to everybody out there just just be very sure that you're talking to somebody that is um with a company that you know um is a legitimate company that you're doing business with and it's a legitimate reason that you need to give out that information all right um scam number three fake charities and, um, you know, in our area, we have a lot of charities and I know a lot of people feel really good um, about giving and want to give, but just make sure, you know, you're, you're doing it to a reputable, a, a, a reputable charity. Um, so the scams with these charities usually are done by telephone, but they can be done using email also. Sometimes call, um, or scammers call claiming to represent a charity in need of money. Sometimes they use recent disasters like tornadoes or earth earthquakes. In this area, it could be hurricanes. Um, alleging that donated funds will be used for disaster recovery and aid for the victims. Many times these fake charities are completely bogus and your donation goes directly into the criminal's bank account. Other times the charity will use a very small amount of your donation from what they've claimed, but they may keep the rest. So how do you protect yourself from these scams? So only give money to organizations you're familiar with and or have closely investigated. Keep in mind that large well-known organizations such as the American Red Cross are in the best position to help. So your efforts may be best focused with them. You can also visit the website, which is www.charitynavigator.org. And you can also call 201-818-1288 or 1288 to look into the charity that you'd like to give to more closely. Now, I have never, are you familiar with that, 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 that charity navigator, Carrie? I think I have heard of that before and it's always a good idea. I know in the case, for example, with uh, helping seniors of Brevard, you know, uh, we are uh, actually, I don't know why we fall up under uh, some of the state regulations that put us in the Department of Agriculture, but there is, you know, there's even a state level that, that a reputable charity is, is registered with and connected with. So uh, that's always a good idea to vet out, you know, we, you know, at, I can speak on behalf of helping seniors and tell you, we always need help, but we also encourage people to go like, look, look who we are, look what we do. And you'll see, you know, we're now in our 11th year of, or sorry, in our 10th year of working into our 11th year of serving here in Brevard County. And so you definitely want to do that research and make sure when you're, when you are donating, because it's always a sacrifice that you're donating, you know, to some, some, some organization that is going to take your donation seriously and, and, and work with it very, very carefully to make sure it's going where it needs to, to do the most good. Right. And I really, I mean, they mentioned here, you know, the American Red Cross, which is a great organization, but, you know, I think a lot of people like to help on a more local level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with American Red Cross, you don't always know. And again, I mean, still great organization, but it's nice to be able to help locally as well. So yeah, that, that's one of the things we often point out when people come up, you know, our major fundraiser, Vicki, as you well know, you've helped us with it before, is our annual Helping Seniors Car Raffle. And, and people uh, really are starting to understand that that's a major way that we fund our operation because our president and founder, Joe Steckler, goes back all those years with A.J. Hires. Um, 
uh, the, the, who owns one of every car dealership, I guess, that counts here in Brevard County. And they have always worked together to use the car raffle as a way to fund the work of the charity. And it does a lot of great things and a lot of great work. But what I was, what I was going to say about it is, is we always want people to, to look at those things and understand when you get involved, you know, you're helping in the case of helping seniors, you are helping right here in Brevard County, because everything we do, we operate the county senior information helpline. Everything happens locally, stays locally, I guess is a way to think about it. Right, no, it's a wonderful organization. And I wouldn't be working with you guys if I didn't think so, it, it's terrific. So a lot of great, great causes. Um, all right, so, but if, if, if someone calls you on the phone, I know people get caught up in things and you're just wondering about an organization, this is a good, um, a good source to call and just, you know, make sure that, you know, it's an up and up organization. So, you know, take down that, that website, that phone number. Um, and, and you could always, you know, again, call, call your, call Helping Seniors of Brevard because they can definitely um, guide you as well. Um, be cautious when giving to crowdfunding platforms like GoFundMe. And I know those, we see those daily on Facebook. Um, only give if you've reached the cause you're supporting, you know, and it's legitimate. And I've seen a lot of people that I know personally have a GoFundMe or, you know, something that's been a big story in the newspapers. And so you feel like they're pretty legitimate. Um, but, I, you know, apparently there's a lot of them out there. So just be very, very careful when doing those. Um, oftentimes the local news will report on fraudulent charities after natural disasters. If you're contacted by a new charity that you're tempted to give to, ask the person calling to send you the information via email. If they say no, try to write and try to rush you into giving, um, propose that they, you know, that you pick up your donation in person or you aren't able to provide you with information you want, then you should just hang up. I mean, if, if there's ever like that rush, you know, that, or that sense of urgency, then obviously something's probably not right. So, you know, in those cases, you just hang up the phone, just don't respond anymore. Um, because those are not the characteristics of a real charity. I don't think Carrie here is going to ever strong arm anybody to, you know, donate to helping seniors of Brevard. It's just, it just doesn't happen with a legitimate organization. Um, it may also help you to put your number on the do not call list. To do this, you can go to www.donotcall.gov or by calling the registry's toll-free number at 1-888-382-121, or I'm sorry, 1222 or 1222. The Do Not Call Registry is a national list managed by the FTC, which is the nation's consumer protection agency, and it gives you the opportunity to reduce the amount of telemarketing calls that you receive. You can register your cell phone or your home phone. Similarly, you may want to remove yourself from mailing lists. Um, so that is a good thing to do. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of seniors that are on the do not call list. And I know working for a large organization like Humana and Care Plus, um, you know, we have to sometimes make outbound calls. And, you know, we've got people, I mean, organizations have to abide by that. It's, it's a, you know, it's against the law if, if you call somebody that's on that list. So that, that, you know, to reduce all of that noise and those calls. So our next one is um, scam number four is, is tech support. Mm -hmm. So it's a very popular one that is targeted to everyone, not just older adults. The tech support scam, um, in this scammers take advantage of the fact that many people are uncomfortable with the computer and internet to execute this one. And I'm, I'm kind of one of those people. I try to be tech savvy, but I'm not the most tech savvy. And I think I mentioned to you earlier with, with my friend whose um, mom got scammed recently. And it, it, it was with the tech technology like this. It's what happens. But um, this scam often shows up as a phone call to you stating that, the pro that a problem has been detected with your computer. The person on the other end of the line may know information about you, like your name, your address, or the operating system that you're using. And they often appear to be very nice people with no ill will. And this is all part of the ploy to get you to trust them. Sometimes the pop-up windows um, that simulate an antivirus software are used to encourage you to download a fake program, which I have definitely seen those on my own, on my own computer. And they look so real, you feel like, okay, I, I need to do this, but don't do it unless you know for sure. Um, 
there may be a call. They may want you to call a number to get help fixing your computer. And once they have you on the line, um, scammers will ask you for your credit card information or to take control of your computer. Both of these things are really bad ideas. If you give them your credit card information, you're given a criminal access to your credit card. And if you allow them to take control of your computer, they now have access to everything that's stored in it. So which can include private information, your passwords, your financial facts. So that's very scary. And that's what happened to this particular person. She gave this all to this person. And luckily for her, I think it happened on a Saturday. And her daughter lives in town and checks on her all the time. But, you know, she had done this without her daughter's knowledge. And somehow in conversation, something came up about that. And the daughter was able to get on the computer and realize there was an issue. Um, and, you know, her mom really didn't recall who she talked to. She didn't have a contact number. So she had enough time, though, the daughter did, to call all the banks and shut everything down. Had they not, had the daughter not realized this had happened to her mom, everything, her bank account would have been cleaned out. And I think there had been recently um, life insurance. Um, it's <clears throat> her spouse had recently passed away. So, I mean, a ton of money would have been lost. It would have been devastating. And luckily, you know, she had someone there asking questions and they figured it out. But it's just, it's a very real thing. So just, you know, be very careful with it. Um, so first of all, you know, to protect yourself from this, don't click on pop-up windows unless you're certain they're from a legitimate antivirus or software company. If you aren't sure, call the company and ask. Keeping antivirus software on your computer can help prevent pop-ups. And, you know, that's the kind of thing, make sure you have somebody that knows what they're doing to help you have get the software on your computer. Mm -hmm. um, never trust phone calls that are made to you. Large companies like Microsoft do not make calls. They wait for you to call them. And for tech support, you should call your computer software company, you know, whether it's Microsoft or Mac directly. And um, their phone numbers are, well, actually, we, there is a handout associated with this presentation. And so if anybody's interested in that, let us know because there are phone numbers that, that to these companies that you can have. Um, in some cases, real tech support specialists may ask you to provide them with access to your computer, but they will not ask you for passwords to sensitive accounts like your email or your banking. And so you do not purchase um, or do not purchase security or computer security over the phone or give passwords or control of your computer to anyone who calls you unexpectedly. So I know like with my company with Humana, I oftentimes um, with technical issues have had to have, you know, our tech people take control of my computer. But I know I am talking to somebody from Humana or somebody from Care Plus, and that's what they do. So they are helping me and never have they asked for, you know, that sensitive information. So I think one of the problems and the problem that happened with this particular person that I was sharing about you know, she was in the early stages of dementia. So she just didn't even have the full capacity. So um, in that, in those situations, you know, if you've got a loved one that's in that situation, you just need to be vigilant and checking on them and making sure they're doing all the right things and checking things like their computer and making sure things are um, protected, you know, that they've got the antivirus software. And, you know, just because, it's, it, it just, it's very real. And, you know, you've got people that just don't always realize what's happening and there's people out there taking advantage of that. So if you've got a loved one, you know, make sure you're checking on them and on a regular basis with these types of things. Um, lastly, if you've already fallen victim to a scam like this, you should probably take your computer to a reputable local computer repair company or have a trusted family member or friend look at it and they can remove any of these harmful programs from your machine. So that's something hopefully none of you out there have had that situation, but it, it does happen. So, you know, just make sure you take care of it. Um, next one, scam number five, the grandparent scam. And I've heard some of my members have, have fallen victim to this as well. Um, so the grandparent scam is one of the most simple and conniving scams of them all. For this one, scammers will call an older person, usually late at night, pretending to be their grandchild in trouble. They may say something like, hi, grandma, do you know who this is? And then the grandparent then guesses the name of one of their grandchildren, who sounds most like the scammer. This gives the scammer the fake identity to follow. Many times the calls do come late at night, and this can throw you off because you are much less alert than you are during the day. 
The fake grandchild will then ask for money now to help them get out of trouble. They may claim that they've been arrested or in a car accident. They often ask for money via a cashier's check or a money order. That's because these sources of cash are untraceable. The scammer will also ask you not to tell anyone else, especially their parents, because they say that they would get in serious trouble if their parents found out and they'd be so embarrassed um, in the situation. And I actually had a member, um, I think I was down in Euro Beach, I was at a home and she had shared with me that that happened to her husband, exact same scenario. And, you know, they're embarrassed to even talk about it because, you know, who thinks they would fall victim to that? And, ha and you think, how could I, how could I realize that's not my grandchild? But you know, just these, you know, disorienting situations, it's late at night, and I think they become very convincing. So it's, it definitely happens. It's very real. Um, so recognizing the scam is the first step in preventing it, but there are a few other things to keep in mind. First thing, you know, call or text your grandchild on the cell phone number you have for them to see if the story holds up. So even if you think it may be them, you know, it's going to be a different number. So call them on their normal number. Um, you should also call the child's parents, even when they are telling you not to. Um, if your grandchild is really in trouble, it's important that his or her parents know what's going on anyways, despite their wishes. And it will help to confront and question the person on the phone too. You can ask them more personal questions to verify their identity or accuse them of conning you. When confronted, a scammer will usually hang up the phone. So if you're not sure, just call them out and, you know, they hang up on you, they hang up on you. All right, scam number six. Many people are familiar with sweepstakes and lottery scams. Even though these scams have been around for ages and have been well exposed to the public, they are still thriving. This is partially um, or partially because scammers are continuously finding ways to alter the scam. Typically, scammers um, inform the victim that he or she has won a lottery or a sweepstake but need to make a payment to unlock the prize. They often send a check and tell the victim to deposit it into the bank the money will show up into their account straight away, but the check fails to clear and it gets rejected or it bounces a few days later. Before the check bounces, scammers will collect the hypothetical taxes and fees on the money, which goes into their pocket. So for example, they might send you a check for $20,000 and tell you that you get to keep the bulk of the money, but then you need to send them back $5,000 in taxes and fees after cashing the check. So this scam usually comes by mail, but may also come by email or telephone. Sometimes scammers even pretend to be the government official, saying that they're from made up organizations like the consumer or the National Consumer Protection Agency or the National Sweepstakes Bureau. Sometimes they even use real organizations like the FTC or the IRS. And so um, ways that you can protect yourself from these scams is um, first, remember the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you answer a phone that seems suspicious, just hang up the phone. More than likely, no one's gonna just be giving you $20,000 or $50,000 or even $5,000. Anytime people are asking you to pay for your prize, you know, it's, it's most likely not a legitimate prize. Don't wire money to anyone. If you really have won a sweepstakes, you won't be asked to make suspicious payments within days of winning. Scammers will usually pressure you into sending the money on a prepaid debit card or a check or money order. This is because it ensures getting the money fast before you realize that something is wrong. Don't click on sweepstakes, sweepstakes links either. Scammers are now using social media sites to advertise sweepstakes scams. If you see something that says click here to win a free iPad or click here to win a free gift card, resist the temptation. It will often infect your computer with a virus or a malware. And I will tell you, I'm guilty of that. I've clicked on those things before and it just takes you down a long rabbit hole. So just, just don't even do it. It's enticing as it looks. You're not going to be getting these free prizes. So just move along. All right. So protecting yourself from scams. Oh, well, actually, one thing, Carrie, that I want to also um, throw out there that's not mentioned in this presentation is um, I've had members who, you know, maybe are widows or widowers and maybe a little lonely, and they are on those dating sites. Mm -hmm. 
And being on those dating sites, you kind of similar to this, you know, people, well, different, but, you know, I've had people tell me that, you know, they, they, they've been in this relationship over, over the internet and, you know, people tell them that, you know, they've, um, they're running into hard times and, you know, they, they've kind of developed a relationship through this dating site, but then, um, they, they're telling this person that they've run into hard times and, you know, could you maybe help me out? And a lot of times, you know, you've got people that, that have extra money and, you know, they're, they are more than willing. And I think more out of anything, it's out of, they think they've got this great relationship with somebody mm-hmm. or, you know, they, they want to help this person and they're truly lonely. And so they, um, I've, I've had numbers give money to people that said they're in trouble and tell them they want to marry them and just craziness. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's, that's a, a pretty prevalent scam these days as well. So just, you know, I just caution everybody to be very careful in those situations too. If you're in just like that, you know, if it's too good to be true, if you've got this, um, this person that is asking you, you know, you think he's the love of your life or she's the love of your life, but they're asking you for money. That's not usually how, how relationships go. So, you know, make sure you meet them in person and you know what your situation is before you start you know, writing checks to people. Yeah, good advice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so protecting yourself from scams. So in addition to all of the things we've discussed, you can use these tips to protect yourself from scams. Be aware that you are at risk. Remember that millions of many, um, millions of many people fall victim to scams every year. You um, And older adults are at particularly higher risk than any other age group. And unfortunately, much of the risk comes from scams um, may be committed by people that are close to you, not necessarily strangers, which that is sad to think, but definitely could happen. Um, to be, well, there's a lot of really great caregivers out there, but you know, I, you hear a lot of stories about that happening as well. So just, just be sure, just be careful. Um, stay informed on the lot, latest scams that can help you know what to look for. We've talked about six common scams today, but there are tons more out there that we didn't have time to talk about. The FTC has a specific specific section of the website dedicated to alerting consumers about scams. You can find it by going to this website, which is http, well, www.consumer.ftc.gov forward slash scam dash alert. Um, That's also in the handout if anybody would like a copy of that. Put your number on the do not call list. To do this, you can go to that www.donotcall.gov or by calling the registry's free or toll free number, which is 1 888 382 1222. The do not call registry is a national list managed by the FTC, which is the nation's consumers protection agency. It gives you the opportunity to reduce the amount of telemarketing calls you receive. You can register your cell phone or your home phone. Similarly, you may want to remove yourself from mailing lists. You should never give personal information like your credit card number, your bank account information, your social security number, or Medicare number to anyone over the phone unless you initiated the call, regardless of what they say. In fact, don't let anyone with your personal information leave your site. Um, Use cash at at a restaurant instead of your credit card so you don't have to part with it. That's something, that's a good tip as well. Um, it's also important to be responsible and skeptical, skeptical consumer. Do your research before paying for a service or donating to a charity. Take your time when making decisions or purchases or ask a friend for help. Don't get pressured into making purchases or signing contracts. Anytime you get an email, look for clues that it might be fraudulent. Don't pay attention to who it's from. Even an email claiming to be from close friends or large companies can be scams. Look for misspellings and odd phrasing within the email communications. This is a sign that something isn't right. And truly, you know, if something sounds really good, um, there's nothing wrong. If it's a legitimate situation, there's nothing wrong with thinking about it or taking the information to the trusted friend or family member before signing on the dotted line. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Always shred everything with personal information on it. This includes your bank account statements, your receipt, and your credit card bills. Use a paper shredder for anything that could help a crook learn more about you or steal your identity. Scammers use a mailbox with a flag up as a way to cash in and get access to your personal information. 
So you're better off mailing directly from the post office or a community mail drop box. That's a good point as well. Um, I hadn't really thought about that. Um, so if you have been targeted, you can find yourself in the unfortunate situation of having been scammed. There are several steps that you need to take as soon as possible. First, you wanna file a police report with your local police department. You should also get a copy of the report for your records and submit it to others, like your creditors, your bank and insurance companies that may need proof of the crime. Next, close the expected bank accounts or credit cards if needed. If you don't think you need to close your account, you should still contact your bank and tell them what's happened and ask them to watch your account for suspicious activity. They can also give you advice on whether or not to close the account. You might also need to file a fraud report with the bank's fraud department. If you open a new account, be sure to use new passwords and new pins. Then you wanna place a fraud alert on your credit file. You can do this by contacting one of the three major credit bureaus that we mentioned before, Equifax, Experian and TransUnion. When one credit bureau confirms your fraud alert, the other two will be notified to do the same. A fraud alert notifies creditors to contact you before opening a new account or making changes to your current account. Next, you wanna file a complaint with the FTC. The FTC shares complaints and information from victims with law enforcement agencies, credit bureaus, and other government agencies. You can file a complaint online at www.ftccomplaintsassistant.gov or by calling 1-877-FTC-HELP. The website and phone number listed are also on the, on the handout if anybody would like that. Optional video um, on filing a complaint you can find at www.consumer.ftc.gov forward slash media forward slash video dash 0054 slash how slash file slash complaint. And that's a lot to remember, but again, that's on our handout if anyone would like it. You can also contact your state attorney general or the Better Business Bureau to alert them of the scam. They may also be able to offer tips and support. Lastly, be sure to follow up with everything with, you know, contact your bank, your creditors, the credit rating bureaus to make sure that everything has been straightened out. And I don't think we talked about that, you know, call, call, call your local Lowe's, um, um, your, your local news channel. You know, everybody nowadays is on Facebook and those neighborhood sites, you know, put it on the neighborhood sites too. That's a really great way to alert people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you've got people coming door to door, maybe targeting a specific neighborhood, that's a great way to alert them as well. Um, and actually, my, my son, and this isn't something we really talked about, my son is 21, and he, um, he had a friend, he has been a friend he's known since middle school, and um, they had, you know, my son's away at college, but with COVID has been, you know, home, and so this, this buddy's been hanging out with them, and the buddy um, had maybe had a bit of a troubled past, and so my son, he was starting to get calls from the bank, mm -hmm. and um, asking, you know, if he had purchased this or purchased that. And my son's like, well, no, I haven't. Well, it turns out this buddy and, and you know, my son considered my dear friend um, was, had gotten into his wallet and taken pictures of like his, I guess his debit card and things like that and was using it. So, um, so even people, so it's not like they said, like we said in this presentation, it's not always people you don't know that, can scam you. You have to be careful, vigilant, even in your own home. So, you know, if you've got people, if you've got work people, you know, people working in your home, um, people stopping by making deliveries or what have you, always make sure you know where your, your credit cards and your debit cards are. Make sure they're safe, you know, safely hidden. You know, that's just not the kind of thing you should be lying around because you, you can get scammed that way too from people that you think you know and trust. So that's our presentation today, Carrie. Wow, such great information, and 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 I like how it was kind of compartmentalized into these uh, different six different uh, uh, kind of I call them categories uh, of of scams that we need to be looking out for. And I know, like here in our area, our state attorney Phil Archer. Uh, has he publishes a uh, thing called the monthly brief every month here, and it's like the latest tips on what to uh, 
what to be aware of as they as they're getting reports of uh, of scam artists and the things that are going on. He puts those into that thing called the monthly brief, and we typically publish those out. By the way, uh, on helping seniors, uh, all of our social media, meaning the Facebook, um, Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn uh, and uh, Instagram. We want to make sure people know when when Phil puts one of those out that that we have it, and so people can kind of be up to up to date on the latest things that are moving around. And so uh, just being vigilant is obviously uh, you know the first watchword in all of this. And I thank you, Vicky, for taking the time like we to, to share this with us. And I wanted to ask you again to please share your contact information because. Uh, like Vicki was talking about, if you want to get a copy of this presentation and some of the notes that uh, she was referring to, particularly, as you noted, she went through and gave a lot of really great resources that you can find online on the web to help you. And I'm sure those are all listed in there. But also, just uh, if you want to have a, a great, great resource uh, who is 100% legitimate and willing and knowledgeable to talk to you about uh, just your own Medicare situation. Vicki is a great person to contact for that as well. So let's go through one more time your phone number and then email address so people can contact and get more get more information either either direction. Okay, and so the, the best number to reach me at would be 502-777-6277. And my email address is vmore5 at careplus-hp.com. Wow. And well, that's a new email address for me. So that's why I'm, yeah, I'm, so let, I'm let's, let's go ahead and give both the number and the email address just one more time while everybody grabs a pencil. <laughs> okay. So the phone number to reach me is 502-777-6277. And the email address is vmore5 at careplus-hp.com. That's great. Great information. Thank you for assembling all of that and sharing with us today. So hopefully we can we can not only stay safe from COVID and all of that, but we'll also be safe. Uh, and, and that's why we call this series, The Art of Healthy Living, because as Vicki uh, goes and finds these different uh, uh, presentations for us to, to take a look at. I, it's impressive how many different areas that we've gotten into and quite frankly, how much we can learn from uh, from from these different things. I mean, even I, re I remember calling one that we did that was talking about using food to help you, uh, just how you work with your, your boosting your mood as, a, as an example. And then uh, later we did one on uh, social security kind of uh, basics. So everybody knows what to do there. And then we have one over here where we're talking about really kind of your line of expertise in particular, uh, just Medicare 101 for, you know, either people who are moving into the area, maybe they're just turning 65, uh, maybe they're, they're confused by what they got in the mail, or maybe they signed up for a plan and it's not working the way that they want to. That's why this Art of Healthy Living series is so important. Our president and founder, Joe Steckler, has always talked about putting together an aging plan to help help us uh, that you have to do on your own because it's based on your circumstances. But having all this information uh, right at your fingertips is so important. So Vicki, I want to thank you again for uh, for just sharing and all the all the help that you, uh, you do to help the Helping Seniors organization along the way. Well, it's, um, I'm very happy to help out and I love your organization. So it's, it's been a pleasure, you know, it's a pleasure working with you every, every other week. So I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. And so like we were talking about uh, the second Friday, this uh, two weeks from now, the second Friday, we will be back with another exciting topic on the art of healthy living. And if I'm looking at the calendar correctly, that's going to take us March 12th. So we do the helping seniors updates a couple of times a week, because we want you to be up to date on everything that's going on March 12th. Vicki, you'll be coming back and we'll have another great topic for all of this. Yep. Yep. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, thanks. And thank you, viewer. On behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, uh, Rick Broderick, our executive director, and Kim Bernard, our education specialist, and actually the rest of our team, too, from Helping Seniors. Thank you for tuning in and hope you have a great weekend.